Good day everyone. This is Ms. Ressa Macy Ligon and for today's session, we're going to discuss about the methods in data collection. This is very important because in doing your data collection, you have to obtain enough understanding about the methods or on how you will collect the data. But first, let's define what is a data. So when we say data, this refers to the set of information or variables that need to be collected, organized, and analyzed to answer a research problem. So um, we need this information in order to create an analysis. And from that analysis, we're going to interpret it in order to answer our research problem. So a data can be a quantitative or a qualitative in manner. So when we say quantitative data, these are the data that can be measured in quantity or numbers. So as long as the data has the numerical value, it can be considered as a quantitative data. So examples of quantitative data are income, age, growth rate, and expenses. Even though you conducted a Likert scale, so just like strongly agree, agree, disagree, and so forth, so that can be considered again as a quantitative data because each um, criterion has a numerical value assigned. So, for example, sa strongly disagree, you assigned it a numerical value of 1. So again, the numerical value is still a number. So it can be considered as a quantitative data. So another, we have the qualitative data. So when we say qualitative data, these are the data that cannot be measured in quantity. So there is no numerical value on this. So this can be described the information, characteristics, and qualities. Like for examples, the strengths and weaknesses of the policy implementation. We cannot assign a numerical value with regards to the strengths and weaknesses of the policy in implementation, right? Another is problems encountered by an organization that can be considered as a qualitative data. So this data, if you observe, this cannot be measured in quantity or there is no numerical value on this kind of data. So there are two classifications of data that you need to consider. We have here the primary data and the secondary data. So when we say primary data, these are the data that are collected from the field under the control and supervision of a researcher. So this type of data are generally collected for the first time through the use maybe of survey, interviews, focus group discussion, observation, experiments, and the like. So you as a researcher, you are the one no, who collect the data. So you collect that data for the first time. Um, kumbaga, kinolekta mo siya directly. So that is for the primary data. However, we have this what we call secondary data. So when we say secondary data, these are the data that are collected and recorded before by someone else for another purpose. So you are not the one who recorded or who collected that data. So this means that that data was already collected by the other people or by someone else just for the other purpose, other than your purpose. So that is what we call secondary data. So para siyang second-hand nga data. So this data are being reused and usually in a different context. In secondary data, this involves less cost, time, and effort. Because unlike in uh, primary data research, you have to, to spend money for your questionnaires or for your research instruments. You will spend money for your enumerators or research enumerators. You will spend money 
for the cost that you will incur during the process of your data collection and not just only the money that you will spend but also the time and the effort however in the secondary data you are not control in control about the data that you want to obtain because in the first place you're just only collected the data from the other sources so that is also the disadvantages of the secondary data unlike in the primary data um, the researcher there has the control or has the power of what data this researcher wants to obtain and usually the secondary data are collected from a book and database maybe in the internet or in a certain organization so we're done with the classifications and let's proceed with the types of data organization so first is we have the time series data so when we say time series data there are there is only one observation over the time periods so for example if you want to assess the economic growth in the philippines from year 2000 to 2020 so your observation there is the philippines alone however the data that you will gather is from year 2000 no to 2020 so there is only one sur observation there but the data that you collected is over the time periods so that is for the time series so it could be in daily monthly quarterly and etc just like in my example the economic growth of the philippines from year 2000 to 2020 so like like for example annually so you will obtain data of in terms of economic growth in the philippines alone from year 2000 to 2020 so that is how time series data can be applied so another is we have the cross-sectional so unlike with the time series data in the cross-sectional there are various observations across individual entities but there is only a one period of time or at a one point in time so for example you are going to assess the economic growth of the countries around the world in year 2020 so there are different observations or different individual entities we have philippines we have japan china and all other countries but there is only a one period of time and that is only in 2020 so you will get the data of the economic growth of each country in year 2020 so actually this can be applied the cross-sectional design can be applied usually in primary data if you are going to collect data just only in a single point of time so there are different respondents different individual entities but you collected the data only this single period of time and that is what cross-sectional design means or cross-sectional data means so another is we have the panel or the pool so this is the mix of time series and cross-sectional data by which um, in panel data there are observations across individual entities over the time period so it's a mix of time series and cross-sectional data so for example you want to ad assess the economic growth of each countries around the world from year 2000 to 2020 so you have different individual entities right so you have philippines china japan and all other countries and also the time period does not only focuses on one period of time but it talks about 2000 to 2020 so that is how panel data works so that is what we call panel sometimes is called longitudinal so different observations across individual entities over the time periods so now let's proceed about what 
is a data collection. So, when we say data collection, this is a way on how you gather the data for a particular purpose from various sources that has been systematically observed, recorded, and organized. So, that is why, no, when we say the word systematic, so it involves process. So, data collection is also a process by which the researcher collects, records, and organizes the information needed to answer the research problem. So, it's systematic. It involves process because you cannot record a data without collecting it. And you cannot organize the data without collecting it and recording it. So, you have to take note that the methods of data collection depends on your research problem. So, that is why in order to make use of the data that you are collected, you have to base your instrument or the data that you want to collect in your statement of the problem. So, why data collection is important? Because it has the purpose. So, its number one purpose is to gather necessary information for a specific purpose. So, what is the purpose of your data collection? So, of course, to gather information in order to answer your main research problem. And another is to keep data and information gathered on a record. And that data will serve as basis in making decisions about the important issues and also to pass information on to others so here you are going to report or to share your findings based on the data that you've been collected so of course you have to consider the following important information for your data collection your research locale or the area where you conduct your study or the focus area of your study Another is the target respondents. Actually, this is very applicable when you do the primary data research. So, in target respondents, this refers to the individual or group of people that you want to participate in your study. And this is very applicable in doing primary data collection. And also, you have to consider the sampling procedure which is also applicable for primary data so when we say sampling procedure this refers to the procedures on how you conduct sample to your participant and it can be probability sampling or um, you select the data by chance or a non-probability sampling wherein not all participants are given the chance to participate your study. So that is the sampling procedure. And as a researcher, you must consider the following questions in conducting data collection. Number one is, which data to collect? What data are you going to collect? So that is why um, before you do the data collection, you really have to review again your statement of the problem. And you have to make sure that your research instruments or the data that you are going to collect should be based from that statement of the problem. Why? Because if you're going to gather information which cannot answer your statement of the problem, then you are just wasting your time collecting that information that are useless. And who will collect the data? Are you the one who will collect the data? So, are you going to do the primary data research or you're just going to collect the data from other sources? So, that is about the who will collect the data and where to collect the data. Where are you going to collect the data? So, in a database from other sources or from an organization or from this specific area. So, you have also to consider this one and how to collect data so when we say how to collect data this pertains to the method how are you going to collect the data are you going to use the primary data collection like you are going to survey interview or you're just only 
to download data that are being posted from the database or you just only um, go to the concerned office and ask permission that you are going to collect the data so it this how to collect the data pertains to the method that you are going to use take note that in data collection applying appropriate methods is necessary so that you can collect data efficiently that are useful in answering your research problem so that is why you have to really base no, the data that you want to collect from your research problem so there are different methods of data collection so let's have this primary data collection so we are gonna using interview method so actually this interview method is widely used as primary data collection methods wherein the interviewer asks questions either personally or in face-to-face -face or through mail or telephone from the respondents in interview method it's more on one-on-one -on -one, talking with the interviewee about uh, something in order to obtain pertinent information for your research so another we have delphi technique so it is a forecasting technique wherein the researcher elicits information from the panel of experts in their fields in delphi technique the information can be collected through the use of questionnaire it can be used through the use of questionnaire or through an email so another is the projective techniques so this is unstructured and an indirect interview method used where the respondents are reluctant to give answers if the objective is disclosed because sometimes when you do this kind of technique this certain um, respondent will have this what we call doubt or hesitation to give his or her response to your questions they will be confused on why you are asking that kind of question so actually the difference of this projective techniques it is unstructured it is not guided with your questionnaires maybe and it's also an indirect interview method and we have also the focus group discussion it is one of the widely used data collection methods wherein a small group of people come together to discuss the common areas of the problem so usually um, there are six to twelve members um, that are used to discuss a certain areas of the problem and you as a researcher you are going to facilitate the focus group discussion so each individual is required to provide his insights on the issue concerned and reach to a unanimous decision in conducting this method there is a moderator and that is you the researcher who will regulate the discussion among the group members and another we have this survey questionnaire method so in the questionnaire method this is very common because this method is very convenient in case that the data are to be collected from the diverse population especially if your population is too large so you are going to use this survey method you're just only to get sample size from your population so that is the survey questionnaire method so a survey questionnaire method it mainly includes the printed set of questionnaires either it can be open-ended or close-ended which the respondents are required to answer on the basis of their knowledge and experience with the issue concerned and that is about the survey questionnaire method and we have the observation method so this involves a systematic observation recording and description of a certain phenomena or behavior the observation method is conducted by a researcher wherein the researcher is going to observe the place or the behavior of these people and maybe the researcher will get a checklist or will bring a checklist as his or her instrument then 
she's going this researcher will be going to check if this phenomena has been observed or not so another is we have the secondary data collection so this is applicable these methods are applicable for the secondary type of data but you can actually do both primary data collection or secondary data collection so we have no two different sources under the secondary data collection first is we have the internal sources since it is internal meaning that the this organization cannot disclose this data to the public so if you want this kind of data you as a researcher would ask for a permission from that concern office or from that concern organization in order to collect this kind of data so aside from internal sources we have also the external sources so the difference of external sources is that this data are already disclosed to the public so you can already download it or you can on already access that data without asking for that permission to the certain um, or to the concern office or organization you may access some external sources from the business journals social books magazines libraries and even in the internet no, using the online database of an organization wherein you can download directly the data that you need to be collected so take note that the secondary data even the primary data can be both qualitative and quantitative so for the qualitative data it can be obtained through newspapers diaries interviews transcripts and etc however the quantitative data can be obtained through a survey financial statements and statistics so let's proceed with the variables so the data is a set of information and the variable is part of that data in variable it represents the measurable traits that can change over the course of a scientific method so there are different types of variables we have the independent variable so when we say independent variable this variable can stand alone and stable this cannot be affected by the other variables you are trying to measure and this can be systematically manipulated by the researcher we have the other variable and that is called dependent variable so when we say dependent variable this variable depends on the other factors that are measured or this dependent variable depends to your independent variable that dependent variable the response to any changes happen to the independent variables take note that you cannot have dependent variable without an independent variable so for example i'm going to study about the influence of social media to the academic performance so since the social media has the influence no, to the academic performance so any changes of that data from that social media may affect the academic performance so based on that research title we can perceive that the social media is your independent variable and your academic performance is your dependent variable so next is we have the intervening variable so this variable links the independent and dependent variable but actually this type of variable cannot directly observable during the research process so this variable serve as the intervention that links the independent and dependent variables another we have this controllable variable so this variable refers to the constant so the control variable is not part of an experiment itself and it is also neither the independent or dependent variable but this is actually important because it can have an effect no, on the overall results of your model 
So another is we have extraneous variable. So this is also known as unforeseen factors that can affect the interpretation of the experimental results. So in a model no, or in a certain research, there are also unforeseen factors that might affect the interpretation of the whole model or the experimental results. So those are what we call the extraneous variable. And lastly, we have the moderator variable which refers to a third variable that affects the strength of the relationship between a dependent and independent variable. In a causal relationship, if x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable, then z, which is your moderator variable, affects the causal relationship of your x and y. So actually, um, this serves as the moderator that links the maybe that may affect the strength of the correlation between the two variables and that is your independent and dependent variable so that's all about the methods of data collection these are really important because when doing your data collection you really need to assess of what kind of data are you going to collect, how you are going to collect that kind of data. So, I hope that you learned something on this video and thank you for listening.